Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful, autumn day here in the fall of 2020. That would be Friday, October 9th, 2020, here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York. And oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is the little Christmas elf, Sancho Panza doing what we do, <clears throat> try to do every day, and that's bring you more doom and gloom about the collapse of everything uh, unfolding on this planet in the fall of 2020. I just spent, you know, my usual hour and a half or so over on the mainstream media today out of the top 100 headlines or so, there is exactly one story, one story that has anything to do with the environment. That's, uh, you know, an important story with that big, uh, mysterious pollution <coughs> outbreak over there in Russia. Uh, but other than that one story, you will not find you know, the, the planet uh, mentioned anywhere. So it's a good thing we have uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to remind us that there is a planet and it is going directly into uh, a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour <clears throat> while the mainstream media has completely shelved environmental news. It just doesn't exist on the mainstream media anymore. Uh, anyway, we're not going to get into a C-word rant. <clears throat> so we're going to start off, as uh, Manga Bay often does, we're going to start off down there in Brazil, but instead of in the rainforest, we're actually going to go to what the part of Brazil you never hear about, and that is Brazil's dry forest. Dry forest. Uh, yes. <clears throat> and what is going on in the dry forest? Brazilian dry forests are chronically degraded even in non-deforested areas. <clears throat> There you go. And so we have a new term for the 21st century here, guys. <clears throat> Put this one in your Doomer glossary. Chronic anthropogenic disturbance. There you go. Chronic anthropogenic disturbance is wreaking havoc in the Brazilian dry forest. Yes. Uh, so what, what is chronic anthropogenic disturbance uh, modeled for areas with human settlements, infrastructure construction, grazing, logging, and fire? Yes, this is the Caatinga Forest is the only biome exclusively inside Brazil and is home to more than 900 species of plants and animals, but with more than 27 million humans, it is also one of the most degraded biomes in the entire country. Imagine that. Chronic anthropogenic disturbance. There is the planet in three words in the fall of 2020. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, and so each week they uh, highlight their YouTube video of the week. This week they're looking at uh, mining companies 
down there in the Amazon. I think we uh, do a whole nother rant on that someday. Okay. Uh, what is going on with jackals in Sri Lanka? Deaths and media-driven panic threaten human jackal coexistence. Yes. Uh, talking about rabid jackals. Uh, once abundant, even at the edges of urban areas, the jackal, kind of like, uh, jackals are more or less like coyotes. Once abundant, even at the edge of urban areas, the jackal has gone extinct. Yes, from much of its former range due to habitat loss. Uh -huh. Do you think so? I don't know. Uh, you know, coyotes seem to have figured it out. I, I don't know what coyotes have figured out that jackals uh, have not figured out. Uh, anyway, kiss goodbye the golden jackal. All right. Uh, well, I have to decide... Do I do, uh, uh, I'm going to skip over the C words. Well, here's another one, you know. Uh, anyway, two C words. We're not going to get into it. Uh, okay, from the C word to the collapsing Arctic. Oh, man. You know, guys, I don't know if I've got my heart in the, this today. I am finally, I, I'm at the very end uh, of my manure pile from hell. It is an absolutely gorgeous day uh, outside. I have shit to shovel, uh, and I'm sitting here talking to myself about what was it, anthropogenic, uh, chronic anthropogenic disturbance syndrome or whatever. Oh, kiss goodbye the golden jackal. Uh, kiss goodbye the Arctic. Uh, okay, let's go over to the Arabian Sea where we see blooms driven by climate change threaten to smother marine life in the Arabian Sea. Yes. Talking about algae blooms. Algae blooms uh, have displaced uh, the bad algae has displace the good algae that forms the basis of the marine chain. So we have good algae forming the very basis of the food chain in the Arabian Sea, but of course the bad algae is eating the good algae. <sighs> All right. Huh. From the bottom of the Arabian Sea to Sumatra. Wow. Sumatran Bridge Project in elephant habitat may exacerbate degradation. Do you think so? As part of the uh, chronic anthropogenic disturbance uh, taking over the planet. <clears throat> yes. Officials in Sumatra are moving ahead with this planet-eating bridge uh, going from the mainland to these, so far, uh, you know, protected islands in part of a wider effort to boost economic development in the region. Yes, and take a guess uh, where they're going to kick off this latest uh, 
chapter of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, the starting point for the Plan Bridge will be the Air Sugon ecosystem, which is home to about 150 wild and critically endangered Sumatran elephants. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. The ecosystem, as recently as the 1970s, was also home to another iconic species, the now uh, obliterated Sumatran tiger. Before a government-sponsored migration program led to a boom in the human population in the ecosystem and the resulting cleaning of large swaths of land for agriculture. Okay, from Sumatra to the Horn of Africa. We're going to go to Sub-Saharan Africa, the Horn of Africa. In the Horn of Africa, conflict and illegal trade create a cheetah hill. A cheetah hill. Wild cheetahs are under intense pressure in the Horn of Africa due to human, human conflicts and illegal trade, which takes about 300 cheetah cubs from the region each year. Yes. In Somaliland, a country ravaged by climate change-induced drought, nomadic farmers will often kill or chase away cheetahs threatening their livestock and either keep their cubs as pets or sell them to traders. Yes. Uh, from the cheetah hill in the Horn of Africa, let's uh, get the weekly report uh, from Brazil's Pantanal. We looked at the dry forest, and now let's go to the biggest wetland on the planet, where we see this week's story, this week's update. Fires destroy nearly half of indigenous territories in Brazil's Pantanal. Yes. Uh, Data indicate that some of the fires in the Pantanal began on private land that was supposed to have been conserved before spreading to indigenous territories and state and national parks. The ind indigenous people there say fires came from outside and, quote, destroyed every Thing. Every destroyed everything. Yes. This year's surge in the number and extent of fires comes amid a plunge in the number of fines. As fines go down, fires go up. Yes, a plunge in the number of of fines imposed by the Brazilian government for environmental crimes, including those related to burning and deforestation. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's go a little bit farther south to <clears throat> Paraguay's Gran Chaco where we find automakers are fueling deforestation. Major European automakers, including Jaguar Land Rover and BMW, use leather linked to illegal deforestation in Paraguay forest. Yes. 
do you think so? Home to one of the world's last uncontacted tribes. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? Uh, the forest of the J Gran Chaco are home to at-risk animals such as jaguars and giant anteaters whose populations have been devastated by cattle ranching and soybean cultivation. All right, let's go from Paraguay, oh, what the hell, let's go over to Indonesia. Yes, where Indonesia's food program eyes new plantations in forest frontiers. Mm -hmm. The Indonesian government says it will expand a national food program by establishing millions of hectares of new crop plantations in Sumatra and Papua, you know, in New Guinea. Uh, guys, uh, the government is also reportedly considering lifting the forest status, you know, meaning the wild forest status of more than a million hectares, that's two and a half million acres of rainforest in Papua New Guinea so that it can clear the area for more farmland. Okay. Here's, let's, uh, one more story here that you will never find in the mainstream media. <clears throat> more than 470 oil spills in the Peruvian Amazon since 2000. Yes, uh, a recent report called The Shadow of Oil reveals that 474 oil spills occurred along just just one pipeline in Peru between 2000 and 2019. Uh, about 65 percent of those spills were caused by corrosion in pipelines. Yes. Uh, Do you think so? Uh, you will not believe this, guys. Deforestation free, you know, this BS greenwashing, deforestation free certification is not working. Wow. Never considered that these. Uh, BS, uh, you, you know, how many versions of this crap? You see this crap all over Home Depot and Lowe's now. Uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're looking at a board. You're, you're looking at a pile of boards. Full disclosure here, I'm, you know, I'm looking at a pile of boards because I'm buying them. And, and, and you know, and putting deforestation pledges on a pile of lumber at Home Depot. Deforestation free is not working. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, moving. You know, there the, these two words, you have degradation versus deforestation. And, you know, they're always, uh, this is called splitting hairs, where we, let's go back to the Brazilian Amazon. So technically, forest degradation 
outpaces forest deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. Yes. Uh, where is uh, does it ever define the terms? Uh, anyway, guys, uh, the splitting of hairs between forest degradation and, you know, there's outright obliterating the forest off the face of the planet. And then there's, uh, you know, degradation. It's all the same thing. It is chronic, what is it? Chronic anthropogenic disturbance syndrome is what it is. <sighs> yeah, so what is going on in the Bantayan Islands in the Philippines? Philippine authorities are preparing to lift the protected wilderness area status of the Bantayan Islands in the central Philippines. The wilderness status imposed back in 1981 limits the construction of buildings and infrastructure. Ha. Ha. But a long-running campaign by residents and business owners to have the protected status lifted to allow for development has culminated with authorities agreeing to open up the coastal areas for new development. Yes, imagine that. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm just, uh, I, I'm skipping over, uh, half of this. Uh, gee, who would have thought that hotter tropics may worsen climate change? You know, climate change makes the tropics hotter, and then the hotter tropics worsen climate change. Imagine that. Huh. One stud, new study finds that a hotter global climate could release far more carbon from tropical soils than, I love this, than currently believed. They're not even messing around with previous believed. Now, yes, currently believed. <sighs> anyway, guys, uh, where let's move along. Uh, all right, we do have a tiny ray of. Uh, of good news here. Predators are returning to Sweden's wild. Bears, wolves, and lynxes are coming back to Sweden. There you go. Uh, however, the growing presence of these animals, and particularly the wolf, is not being welcomed by farmers. You think so? Uh, Alcoa versus the Amazon. Uh, Alcoa versus the Amazon. So what happens when roads cross wilderness areas? When roads cross wilderness areas, plant pathogens can hitch a ride. Do you think so? Uh, would you believe 
that roads serve as corridors for the transmission of disease? Hmm, who would have thought it? Uh. What is still, have they finally cleaned up uh, that leaking oil freighter over there in Sri Lanka? Uh, Sri Lanka is now seeking $2.4 million from the owners of an oil tanker that caught fire off the country's coast in early September. Uh, I guess that I, is there still 270,000 tons of crude oil left on that ship? It's a little unclear. Okay, let's go over to somewhere, an island off the coast of New Guinea, Woodlark Island, some island off the coast of New Guinea. Land grab, logging, and mining threaten biodiversity haven of Woodlark Island. Woodlark Island lies off the coast of New Guinea and is home to dozens of unique species. Yes, uh, a recent court ruling has seen the land rights granted to Woodlark Islanders in 2016 revoked and returned to an agricultural company yes, that plans to transform 70% of the remote island into oil palm plantations. There you go. A mining company has also started expanding infrastructure and clearing forest on the island in preparation for an open pit gold mine. The company also intends to dispose of its mining waste via a controversial pipeline into a nearby bay. Would you, we're, we, guys, e even the dog is telling me, like, like, Pop, wrap this up. You, you got shit to shovel. We're, we're going to do one more here, guys. Uh, why do I do this to myself uh, every Friday? All right, one more. You will not believe this. <clears throat> World's protected areas lack connections. A recent study published in the journal Nature Communications has found that about 10% of the world's protected areas are connected by land that is considered intact. Yes, looking at the Human Footprint Database. <clears throat> the Human Footprint Database, otherwise known as the Chronic Anthropogenic Disturbance Databa Database, <clears throat> maps out human impacts such as roads and farmland across the planet. Yes. Uh, Yes, little dog. The human, Im what is it? The human impact footprint or the human footprint impact or, or the uh, chronic 
anthropogenic disturbance. Anyway, I, I've had just about enough of this crap. Uh, it is a gorgeous day, and I have shit to shovel. Get out there and shovel shit while you still can. In the fall of 2020. Bye, guys.